Keizu, who was ringing here yesterday. But this is the main five, of course, for Sink Esports. So with that said, I am joined by my co-caster again. Going to be joined by Shorkan here. And apparently I'm sounding static to you. Yes, to okay. me. Do let's, I sound static to you? You sound fine, but let's let's do a recall real quick. Sometimes Skype yeah. gets here. One sec. All right, let me call him back real quickly here. Good old Skype. Is that okay. better? Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, cool. Like it was just going full on robot, and I was just I was having trouble understanding what you were saying. <laughs> well, that's just fine. I just mumble anyways. <laughs> I've actually have been in. Um, in games with people who mumble so much that when you're playing, you're actually having trouble deciphering what they're saying. It's <laughs> unbelievable. It's a little frustrating, yeah. It's a little bit frustrating, but well, I'm, I'm sure that's not the problem with you, No, Ricky. never. I Very... communicate, always. I'm always a good always. teammate. Never any <laughs> issues. I never rage or anything like that. Totally not yeah. sarcastic right now. Okay. But no, the grand finals are here. Obviously excited to be here for this. This is it. I mean, we're going to find out who our Psycho 5 champions are between Sync and Complexity. So excited to be here after a little bit of a break there. Of course, uh, Sync defeating BMG two games to nothing in a pretty crazy series in itself to get to this point. But uh, they are here. So we, we, we got picks and bands to talk about, so let's get into it. We got Parasite, Wild Soul, Midas, and Tremble. Uh, where the bands, what was the first pick? God, so much of the spam going on. We have Behemoth. Okay, I'm just going to look at that. Okay, Behemoth and Awarbius, Glacius into Riptide yep. is what Tundra. we had here. And then Tundra coming out, actually, a third pick for Sync. So, you know, we saw them, uh, we saw Deadlift a couple times in the previous series there, Sync in the clean that second game, but they're going Tundra here. Mm -hmm. The third pick. Uh to keep it away from Oscar, I think, and they realize the potential of the Warbeast Tundra. That's that's what they've been doing this entire cycle, and it's been working out so well for them. Yeah. But um, yeah, whether Zibe is gonna, I mean, I think Zibe has some experience with that hero, right? I think he's played it before. Uh. Anyways. On Tundra. I think Zibe's played Tundra before. Like a suicide Tundra? I I don't know. I I don't know. I. He, probably. I mean, let's be, like, probably. He's been around for a long time. Yeah. yeah. I can't say it's really coming to me as, like, uh, when I think Suicide Tundra, you think more so Zane. Vivo Corporation, he definitely has done it several times as a late, especially, but um, maybe not him. I mean, Tundra in general, though, really Pro isn't Busk. a popular hero. Yeah, Pro Busk, of course, back with Zane. Yeah, but <laughs> long time ago. That was a while ago, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I still am always, I've always been curious since then why he wanted to play carry so badly. Afterwards, <laughs> even when he had Haxron on the team, yeah, Haxron ended up going uh, middle instead. That was an interesting team. Again, that that uh, hey, well, it's a team that won a cycle though. It's a team that won cycle number two to be fair. So may have been interesting, uh, but they did take one of the cycles here. Only three teams have done so so far. So, but uh, yeah, with Haxron and then Zibe even thrown in there. Of course, Zibe even has some carry experience. And his history yeah. on top of that, so, but uh, yeah, things have changed now. As, in uh, the, yeah, in the Penny Show, I remember uh, Zibe was in there as well. Yeah. One person from every team going to Dreamhack, and then uh, <laughs> the question was asked to uh, Zibe, "Who do you think is the best carry player?" And then uh, he said himself. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Confidence right there. Yeah, he's a confident so player. We need we need one of those things like. And not completely serious, just like a fun type of thing. I mean, we had that, what was it, like, not really an all-star match, but where you played and Waza played. Oh, God, and... that was, yeah, that was a while ago. That was, we did uh, at that time, S2 versus yeah. Community. Yeah, with, we actually won that. Our Dangerous Dan for us actually came through and carried. Wait, wait, wait. I was talking about when I played as well. We played the Mid Wars, oh. the Rift Wars, and uh, 5v5. Oh, wow, Caldivar. yeah, you're, you're talking about more recently here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I do remember that as well. Yeah, we had the teams that we created, yeah. Yeah, and it was – originally it was going to be Hugo Bick playing for Team Who or something. It was like the top six teams, and then, like, uh, I was on – what was it? Uh, I think Sam? Milkfat yeah, it might was, have been. Uh, yeah, carrying with uh, Bloodhunter or something or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, good times there. Mhm. Mm 
All right. Well. But yeah, anyways, there's a game going on. Yeah. Solstice picked up for Zlapt. I mean, you've mentioned before how Zlapt is one of the few people who actually plays the hero, and I think every jungler can play him. I just think that every single captain thinks the hero is useless. Um, as far as uh, the Solstice, yeah, Zlapt being the only one that doesn't here. <laughs> yeah. Likes to pick it up here. Yeah, it is interesting how for a player and a team that – it's obviously yeah, it has a lot of prestige for how I mean even before they, they they would pick it up for him before when Insania was the captain and whatnot so yeah just it just, it's just them and you would figure with a top team like that that others would follow but no Zlapt is the only one that really plays Solstice definitely no one else really yeah it's a say. great hero for defending towers though yeah the but ultimates excellent for that but other than that I often feel like oh look it's uh, Solstice. But, I mean, it's uh, sometimes it has its uses. Like, it can kind of semi-carry if it's given enough farm. And with, you know, the jungle change, it's uh, very able to do that. Uh, yeah. I don't know. He, he definitely – I was going to say he's kind of unique in that sense, but I guess not really because, uh, you know, a war beast even and even a Lord South Force, you could say to an extent, have that kind of semi-carry potential. So, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the ultimate too kind of tied in there. So Zlap likes it. But, man, we got some other picks to talk about here. Monarch. Chronos. Fourth picked, and then yeah, the Kronos. I know Kronos. you've been mentioning this a while. <laughs> he finally whether goes he, here. Yeah, whether he's going to go for a resto stone that remains to be. I don't uh, think so. I, I hope we, so. What we've seen Haxrim play before, like I said, like this is the one team slash player that plays it has played it at least two or three times that I can recall, and he builds it as you know very carry style. You know the fire brand, the uh, rune cleaver first into you know the fire brand geometer span things like that. So. I, I'm, I'm going to say don't expect a Restoration Stone, but I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So yeah. We'll see how that goes. I, well, I think it's legit. I think it's completely uh, valid and, you know, possible. <laughs> I I want him to pick it up. I honestly think it's the best choice, especially when you're against a hero like Dr. Repulsa, and you don't even need to use two ultis in one fight. You can make sure to just have the second ultimate up for the next fight. Yeah. That way you are never caught... I'd say off guard. That's a good point. Well, he didn't go it on Sandwraith. So, I don't know. I don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll see what he does here now. I will say, I'm looking at this Legion lineup, and it is a little funky with the Chronosphere. It's it's a four melee yeah. lineup, and that in itself is, is a little well, worrisome. Well, Solstice. Solstice is Solstice. good. You're already, yeah, you're right there. Solstice obviously is good follow up there, but Behemoth is a little awkward. You know, Tundra isn't necessarily. Okay. It'll it's a bit awkward, game. but at the same time, if the Kronos player is good enough, putting people on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. Position that, again. That, again, like Masera, if he, he's on top of his game, he can just blink right on the edge of it and blow people up regardless because the AoE of the ultimate is quite large. Mm -hmm. We're going to see some big ultimates here, I'm sure. This is definitely a game that's set up for it, at least from the Legion side. They had a lot of Wombo Kama potential with that set, so... Yeah. Uh, as far as the Hallborn team, you know, kind of pick we, we somewhat overlooked here, but because uh, you got maybe caught up with the Kronos, the Solstice discussion, but yeah, Monarch coming out here for Complexity. Love going to be playing it here, but uh, Monarch, not your typical it's support. It's super strong versus Zibe. It's super but strong. Zibe in general or Tundra anymore? <laughs> Tundra. So, okay. Because uh, it removes all debuffs and stuns, and with a stun like Tundra's, it's a four-second stun when it's maxed. If you don't get rid of that, it goes through Shrunken and everything. If you don't get rid of that, it's just, my god. You get completely shrecked. Yeah. And yeah. again, what I'm... you got on the Warbeast, I'm still confused as to why teams are not choosing to ward off camps for a Warbeast. I mean, same thing could be said about a Solstice, but it really affects his farm if he has to, if he's delayed for like one or two minutes. Because, you know, um, with jungling, with most heroes in the jungle, except for, I don't know, what heroes farm just as fast as level one. Like Tempest has constant farm throughout, but Solstice, the more levels he gets, the faster he farms. Same thing goes for Parasite, same thing goes for Warbeast, same thing goes for Sulphorus, same thing goes for... Pretty much every jungler except for Tempest. Yeah. So if you delay them those first two minutes or something, their GPM is going to be affected so much more because it starts to like to get the ball rolling. 
takes a while. And I don't know if you know what I'm trying to say with this, but it may if you, even if he has to buy a ref ward and it delays him by two minutes, that has more than just a little bit of an effect. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm going off on a tangent here that isn't no. really necessary, but yeah. that's how I think about it at least. Yeah, yeah, we're in a pause here, so time for discussion on things like that. Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, not not making it a priority here, that's for sure, is is Sync Esports, so uh, not going to worry about it here, but yeah, you see Zibay coming back. <laughs> it's pretty much confirmation it wasn't necessarily Malthus crashing in yeah. the previous game. I guess just simply uh, something's up uh, with his uh, with his game here, unfortunately, today. But hopefully not going to play too much of a role as we move forward here once people are all good to come back and good to go here. Then we'll be good to resume on with our first game now here of this best of three grand finals, of course. So, um we do see Chronos, of course, in the short lane, like I said. And, now, I mentioned Rune Cleaver, but the more I think about it, actually, Thunderclaw, I think, is what he likes to go for. And yeah, Thunderclaw. Yeah. <clears throat> Thunderclaw makes a lot more sense, but did you know, did you know, okay. a little tidbit of information, Geometer's illusions and just illusions in general of Chronos, bash, with the new bash. Real? So they have the chance to bash, just yes. like the regular one. Did they yes. before? No. Huh. They did not. So, so really? I don't know if that was unintentional, but it's it's. I think it could be That's important. Pretty strong. I mean, the, yeah, I, I, they I've do always... extra damage in the chronosphere as well. Yeah, illusions are are a definitely interesting breed as far as Han goes. As far like what what they can and can't do. Like some of the more noticeable ones, I feel is like like a legionnaire. You know, the fact that he can actually spin and do kind of full damage from that. So there are some. I guess it kind of fits along those lines. You know, he just kind of has that passive ability where if it happens to proc, it does the full. I assume it's full damage, as well. Um, I'm not sure about that. Illusions do have the whole that effects like that, including. Um... See, I believe In Legionnaire including spins. Including Gauntlet. Yeah, Legionnaire spins do do, do full damage. Full damage, yeah. so. So it would make sense if these do full damage as well. And did the dog delay the creeps enough? Yep. Then controls for Magmus. This is a really big deal. The delay was just enough so that the creeps were going to hit the tower. Mm -hmm. Had Kronos not been so focused on stopping the dog he would have been able to stop the creep wave from going into the tower so a little bit unfortunate in the mid lane though a tundra versus a riptide and riptide has a shield and a hatchet and tundra has four minor totems huh <laughs> that's an interesting choice there i mean wants that fast bottle safe to say he so. has it now that, it's a really fast bottle yeah. and he he did use his piercing shards and it is actually a lot of harass, even at level 190 mixed damage. Yeah, we haven't really seen a Tundra against a Riptide yet. I mean, look at this right here. As you say this, oh my gosh. This is why. <laughs> Nearly kills him, but he did just get the bottle, as we mentioned. So he's going to be able to use that regen here. And again, he has the shards now. Oh, man. I thought he was going to maybe wait to level 2 to then use it another time. But maybe he's even yeah. going to get his charge here. Uh, we'll see what he does. Nope. No, he does get the second and piercing shard, so... It, it's it's so much damage. 260 magic damage. That's the same as a level 4 nuke. Oh, here's Solstice. There we go. The charge Could coming out. Daytime first, stun hits. Fuzzy Sloth. He's not getting away from <laughs> this one. That's a bloodlust kill. Slapped, picking it up. Holy right crap, that damage. He did level 2 into charge, but it's so worth it. Yeah. But Gets 260 it. damage. Mixed damage, but my god. Oh yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> you know, especially in, in, like in, in in your face like that, it's, you're gonna get pretty much max damage there, as far as the piercing shards are concerned. So yeah, a great setup. And again, this kind of goes back to this is not a a hero that we we see it's, we see little of him, but and again, especially in that one v one against a Riptide, Fuzzy Sloth has proven that he's very comfortable with Riptide, and it's dangerous to do one v one against him. But Sink's making it clear right here they weren't too worried. And they're, yep. they're showing perhaps why. They had an idea in mind, again, that idea of a strategy here. So, well played. And Fuzzy Sloth, now as I say that, he comes back and he's already farming away Oscar. once again. But bottom lane, Oscar. Oh, that rev ward. That might he's do gonna it. He's going to die from Glacius auto attacks if he doesn't jump away. And he, then the leap comes in. Yeah, it's, it's like a, you know, yeah, pick your poison kind of deal. There you go. <laughs> but this is why <laughs> Magma Suicide is not the best. Mm-hmm. 
if he doesn't start off with boots, he has no way of getting away. And he he originally started off with 325 gold. He had the uh, light stones and a health potion and a mana potion and two minor totems. He started off with 325 gold, and I thought he was just going to go for the you know early boots so that he could get away. But he ends up buying a shield, and well, that's where his uh, troubles began. Yeah. See, look so at Solstice sync... again. Oh no, this is uh, Behemoth, excuse me. Sync off to a really good start. Yeah, and Tundra honest. is doing really well, I think, versus the Riptide. You know what else is kind of interesting here? Now, I know different teams, obviously, that's, you know, warrant different bans for sure, but again, Sync, both games in the BMG series, they banned Dr. Repulsor in their first set of bans. Yeah, this time around, they leave it open, of course, and Complexity happens to have it here. Now, Doctor's not necessarily a hero that screams, you know, ban by any means, but it, again, they did it twice against BMG, so I guess that was just simply they respected Balthazar's Doctor a little more here. Look at Solstice, by the way. He's looking for another gank in the mid lane. Yep. Or not, placing a reward, but he's having a really good time this game. 360 gold per minute. He even leveled his W in order to farm faster. So, yeah, he's going to be level 6 soon, I think, after, yeah, <laughs> after a short while. I mean, he's completely out farming what you got, and what you got has nothing blocked. Now, you mentioned leveling up the W, the Illuminati there for a little bit faster The Illuminati. <laughs> yeah, I love that. The Illuminati. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, the Illumin so so really I mean the the interesting thing about that ability though it's it's actually a really good scouting tool I feel like too it's sure it'll help him farm a little bit but he can also use it at a pretty far range to you know see if anyone's in an area before maybe trying for a gank or seeing them come uh, Oscar oh my gosh nope never mind Masera coming in to catch him off there and Take him okay out. Magnus now has the boots but. Kronos is also a very strong laner, as you can see. The jump just allows him to help his support at any moment in time, pretty much. And now with the ultimate as well, I have a feeling that Magnus is just going to die again if he shows up on lane. So Magnus should start roaming. We already see Ma uh, Monarch sitting behind Riptide in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now he doesn't have his W, by the way. He doesn't have his Chrysalis. Again, this is an interesting thing I feel like about Monarch. We talk about this pretty much every time we see him. Is like, you know, how is he going to build? Because I, I feel like it's just every game, you know, it's really up to the player. And and it's probably different across the board as far as what people think. But Love likes the awards here. He likes the Noxious Nightcrawler. Yep. But I guess what his role this game is going to be is complete and utter ward bitch. <laughs> <laughs> One of those. Huh? Pretty much. Yeah. And, yeah, other than that, I don't see him uh, doing much more. He needs to get levels, of course, but he's not putting it at first priority. If you level Chrysalis, then you need to put levels as your first priority because then you have no offensive capabilities at all if you only got Chrysalis maxed. And it's a fantastic ability. It's an absolutely amazing ability, but it does require a lot of levels. But yeah, 80% damage reduction is uh, insane. Yeah, see, I don't know. I've always been under the impression, personally, that w it's a 1.1 dare. The fact that it does mitigate even just 20% is pretty strong in itself. And then the nice little burst of the 75 heal, it's going to deter people from, you know, really trying to commit to a kill a lot of the time or, you know, trying to chase somebody down, perhaps. So, I mean, me personally, if you're not going to max it out, I still think the one point is worth it, but... You know, I, I know I've mentioned that before, and players just simply don't get it. So I, I just might be wrong on that outright, but um, we'll see what Love does here. I think the reason for that, though, is because one level in it, it's the duration is still three seconds long. Had it been that the duration increases per level, so, you know, you have a Chrysalis that reduces 80% damage, but it starts off with one second or... Yeah, 1.5 seconds, 2 seconds, 2.5, 3 seconds. Then you could go 1.1 wonder. I think then the hero would be picked up a lot more because you'd have this hero who can stop the burst from a Magnus ulti for 1.5 seconds with one ability, once one level into the ability. I see what you're saying, yeah. That, that, that's actually I, an interesting point, okay. That would be a slight buff, which would I make Monarch, I think, more capable of <laughs> being picked. Because then you can max the Crippling Paul in 2.5 second duration, nothing to scoff at. And then you have wards after that. So at level 10, you'll be able to have 
pretty much all you need. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that, that, that. The interesting thing about that, though, I can almost feel like Monarchs may even want to just keep it at one point then in a lot of ways because yeah. they don't want the duration to be longer, you know, just get that more of the minor impact. But um, It's like a Rhapsody Ultimate, what you said. It's all mm -hmm. about, it doesn't even matter if the ult is channeled long. It might just be about that one second burst. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that would be a fantastic buff to Monarch, and we would see him a lot more. Well... Is how he is for now, and enough for Complexity to pick him up, though. And again, he is just—he is pretty strong. I mean, there is no denying that. The—the the ultimate too. I'm trying to—I am trying to think this game here, and uh, you know, it's not like it's going to help the Chronosphere necessarily, but there—there there are there are a bit of uses for it still. I mean, just the speed in general uh, is pretty good, and yeah. there, there are several stunts against Sundra, as I was saying earlier. Yeah, the Avalanche, yeah. As well as Behemoth, it has a really far range. I think does the range increase? Uh, no, the so. range is 1400 at all levels. Yeah, so I think a lot of people it, just get one point in it and then keep it there. But it's it's fantastic versus um, versus Behemoth as well. Mm -hmm. Once he gets that portal key, you can just uh, get everybody not to be not stunned anymore. Ooh, interesting. Up here at the top lane now, Glacius. Okay, he's gonna be popped out here now. He puts a stun on Oscar, but there's a lot here. Riptide coming in with the eye of the storm now. That finish oh, that Tundra ends up getting the kill on a Monarch as well. And all of a sudden, actually, Riptide by Riptide. himself. Chronos, Chronosphere, maybe? Okay, he is going to use it right here. Is this going to be enough for the mana, kill? Though. I don't know yeah, if it Solstice is. Yeah, Solstice is going on. Riptide He's going to come well. in right there. Yeah, no stun necessary. It'd be nighttime, just more assisted damage, and it is enough. So, talk about completely backfiring for the Hellborn team. They were setting up there. Obviously, there was three heroes up here to try to make a kill happen, and all of a sudden, they get turned on. I don't know if that was Shiver spotting or what, but clearly that just worked out much better for Sync Esports right there. And they have a 6 nothing lead now. They're going to be pushing middle lane here now. Mm -hmm. Solstice didn't even have to use his ultimate there, and if he would choose to, he could just use his W. He's, yeah, that, uh, oh, the Luminescence. So the Nitro, yeah. yeah, it does actually spot but a lot shorter duration. It's just more of a quick burst. Gonna check it out there. No, no, no. It follows the heroes. It follows the heroes. Target an area to grant vision of enemies for eight seconds. So, if you get vision of the hero the entire oh, time. Wow. Did you know? I, I honestly you. can't. See, yeah, I, I have no problem with it. I, I, I don't know a <laughs> lot of things, and I know that. There's a lot of things. I can't say I knew it. that's how the ability exactly worked. I really didn't. I thought it was more of like a burst thing that, you know, just you just got the attack damage and the move speed from, and. It's kind of like a quick scene thing, but wow. So it keeps vision for eight seconds. Okay. See, here's the, th here's the thing with that. That's, this is why I'm fine, you know, admitting I didn't know that, is that there's people in chat that didn't know that as well. And I'm fine, wow. you know, being that guy that just, you know, if that means I have to admit that, so be it. But, you know, at night, I think Luminescence is a lot better. You get attack speed, you turn more into turn into a carry and you get some movement speed and you get vision of them even when they're trying even when they juke i don't know 5k range away yeah you still know where they are exactly and it's very nice when you're waiting for initiation you know you spot out the magmas who's about to channel his ultimate then you have eight second vision on him you have i don't know That's something really to stun him with That's yeah really strong that really does actually give another level to that ability for sure that's uh, that. That's really uh, really cool to know. Okay, Tundra going and he wanted that tower kill. Well, he got he it. Yes, the invis. Oh my God, they did not have. I wow. Thought, for some reason, I thought this was a rev war, but no, that's a snowman. <laughs> that's a. That, that's a snowman. Noxious night gorilla there. So he actually got what a play by Zibhe there. Yeah, it was. Confidence. It, it seemed so like, it seemed so like small, just like PKing in. I thought he was dead immediately, but he must have popped the invis before PKing in. To make it that quick. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the 1.5 second fade time, you can still do stuff in it. Yeah. Interesting. Kronos, by the way, kind of quietly doing his own thing. Lightning. 455 GPM, the Thunderclaw on him, and he already 1,100 more gold saved up. So, yeah, Kronos, he's definitely starting to be uh, pretty scary already. I mean, he'll look at Zibbe, too. 442 GPM. Jeez. How is he so far? 3 0 and a 1, I guess, is a lot of that, but he did also do very well in the middle lane. Yeah. After piece. the gank from uh, Solstice, pretty much. So I guess that's one weakness of Riptide. You know, Solstice, he can't stop Solstice from charging him. Mm -hmm. 
eventually it's going to hit. Huh. Interesting there. <laughs> That's yeah. So wait, how does that charge work then with uh, with, with the, the silence? Yeah, well, no. With the, so with the the charge of solstice, if uh, Rifthead happens to be ult using his ultimate, will solstice kind of just run into it and do nothing? I think so. Okay. Similar to Shrunken Head, okay. you'll just end up running in there and so just like, like do passing. the animation but not actually. Sing. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense then. Huh. Well. Well. Yeah. I'm I'm as surprised as you with the fact that Zibe has this good farm. Yeah, he's gonna have his post ace here. I, I'm guessing that's well. Actually, doesn't have enough. Gold Talking right about now. good farm, Serenia, zero zero five, one hundred eighty gold per minute. He just picked up his steam boots as well, so that's gonna be a big deal. Mm -hmm. He won't be such easy food for Riptide. I mean, he'll still be easy food, but <laughs> not as easy. Yeah. Yeah, locking down Fuzzy Sloth is definitely a powerful strategy. I mean, just a lot of middle players in general. You lock them down and. Kind of sets the tone of the game for that team. And Complexity, I feel like, is definitely one of those teams. They really do rely on Fuzzy Sloth to have a good start most of the time and kind of work off of it. Now, he is farming 300 gold per minute, so, again, it's not like he's doing bad necessarily. It's just he is 0-2-0. And, and, and especially on a Riptide with no kills yet, uh, that's definitely pretty crucial as well. So um, that's uh, something that Complexity is going to hope uh, changes here. They still have zero kills and nearly 15 minutes in now. This and point. this is such a different game from versus BMG. Saint just completely changed their playstyle around. They have a lot of kills compared to complexity. <laughs> well, yeah, but um, they also have a lot of farm. Mm -hmm. So they're correctly balancing the whole farm and kills this time. When last game in the last series, when they played um, the deadlift prisoner behemoth, they were just running around looking for kills. But you know. Mageman was farming all the while, so he was actually able to keep the gold semi the same. Yeah. <laughs> there was even a point when they were ahead in gold. Yeah. It's definitely reminded me of very, like, uh, you know, something w one of the most dominant teams ever, arguably the most of State Green. Uh, one of the biggest things that they made a point of was just, as I'm talking about all the time, you know, objectives is the key. You know, hero kills will kind of come along just naturally, but objectives are the key. You know, getting those tower kills, getting the ancients, especially earlier on, that eventually translate to Congor and so on. So, uh, Sink really is definitely on the point here as far as accomplishing that is what I'm getting at. So, and if a team's playing at that level, you know, you're in trouble. I mean, to be fair, though, we, we talked about that with Complexity yesterday. They, too, were looking pretty good when it came to their teamwork. And, uh... I got it. You know, in the second game where Sync took it, obviously things kind of turned, went down a little bit, but they did. He didn't go rest the stun on Sunday. Uh, didn't go sand. Yeah, did not go rest the stun. Uh, but is doing, push. Yeah, they're they're ready to fight. Solstice level 11 with a PK. I mean, if Chrono, it's very reliant on Chronos to get a good ultimate off for Solstice to be able to do wonders with that ultimate. But I mean. Kronos' ulti is not the hardest thing to hit, ultimately. No, oh, it, especially for a player that plays it so often. Now, this is interesting because there is a team or a ward here that sees this. So they they get a couple of the ancients and then they, they leave the last one here. So a um, little bit of a steal there for complexity. And yeah, Formless is somebody that we have kind of been quiet about as well. But man, he is looking good. Uh, he yeah, has an icon. I can... But... Is it going to be enough? Does he have the damage right now? Yeah. Because he's not going for a Grimoire, so he is going to lack that bit of damage. And he's tanky, but, I mean, Cronus' ultimate, four seconds of lockdown, plus uh, Solstice on top of it, Tundra ultimate. I mean, a bunch of stuff can go very, very wrong. Yeah. Oh, man. Zebe also has a puzzle box now. Yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah, I'm so, I was so sure it's gonna maybe be that post as he just loves the item, and it seems like Tundra's a pretty good hero for it. But you know, he goes to puzzle box. He uh, has the level one puzzle box currently, well on his way to level two, and that means of course level he, three to follow here. He brought his game face, pretty much. Yes, he did. He is ready to play here in these grand finals. Definitely wants that uh, cycle victory as much as anyone here. Okay, so. 
But I, I'm seeing the chat now, and they are commenting about your knowledge of uh, solstice uh, abilities. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how everyone knew it except me. I'm yeah. the only one in the world in the chat that did not know that. I mean, come on. Uh, Love is going to be fine, by the way. He actually, the, so obviously the glacial. Um, Downpour. Well, that, but the ice imprisonment was used right before that, but of course he can take yeah. it off himself with his ultimate. Now, granted, he did use his ultimate to do that, but it kept him alive. So. Oh, the behemoth ultimate. Meanwhile, you used what you oh got my in the jungle. Just drops him. Doctor's going to try to get revenge here. He definitely can, especially with Riptide coming in. Down goes Behemoth, and now Zibby's also in trouble. Despite that haste it doesn't matter. Kronos Field, though, coming out. Now Fuzzy Sloth, he's being locked down. He has a Shrunken. He can't use it, though, or can he? He is going to be able to use it right here. The damage from Kronos wasn't enough initially. It is enough in the long run, though. Stun him to Formless from Solstice. He is going to be able to buy the distance to get away. The Icon Chargers are doing a little bit here to keep him alive. So the fight got a little chaotic there as the return came from Complexity, but uh, still, but like, sink there. I mean, the Kronos ultimate was not the most effective. I mean, he caught his two allies when there was definitely some space in between. And if he had a better Sol um, Kronos ultimate right there, Solstice could have ulted as well, right point blank in the face of uh, Dr. Repulsor. So you gotta, you gotta imagine that that made quite a difference. But yeah. That's true. Not, not a hero that many people play very often. I mean, you mentioned that Sync has been running it a bit, but... He's the only one. He really is. Uh, again, I keep finding myself saying, I wish we had Quincy here. God, I wish we had Quincy here. But no, it'd be fun to pull up those stats on, on Solstice. I would not be surprised if they're, like, literally the only team. I really don't recall any other team kind of running Solstice. Not even to oh. just to try it. So Other than right. you. I, you did. You yeah, did. yeah, I did once. It's been a while. But it was versus uh, Reason in the re first relegation match, I think. Oh, you did even last week. Okay. Obviously, I was not not the, not last week, but um, oh, then previous to that, okay. The previous cycle. Gotcha. When uh, yeah, then I played a Luna afterwards. Yeah. To support with because logic. <laughs> but yeah, Geom Geometer is picked up on Kronos, so I really like this. Imagine though, rest of stone double Geos. That all like. I gotta think back to uh, Phantom Lancer in that a case. A lot of illusions, from yeah. Dota, just all the illusions. You mean a Cancer Lancer? Cancer Lancer, but that that term was known more in Dota 2 oh, yeah. than anything else. His abilities all got changed as well, so I don't know anymore. Well, um, yeah, it's uh, the geometer Spain here. I mean, that's as you pointed out, the illusions being able to take advantage of the bash. That is pretty uh, pretty impactful. Pretty impactful, especially yep. if that's the case there. Formless, by the way, getting caught by Behemoth initially. The freeze on top. He's dead. They found him in the jungle up here. Behemoth doing enough lockdown initially to buy time and eventually get the kill. Look at Glacius, by the way. He's even higher level than Behemoth yeah. here. <laughs> Sony oh, has, has been having a very nice game. Oh! Tundra caught him. Yep, he got caught by Tundra right there. Was not expecting that stop before he wanted to. Meanwhile, Solstice in Look the background. The a big explosion. Town goes. Riptide right there. The Bash Brock definitely doing a lot of work. They just cleaned <laughs> up complexity. This is a buyback. Dr. Repulsor, by the way. Is he actually going <laughs> to live? Wow. He manages to barely live. Warbeast. I don't know if he's going to be so lucky. In fact, Kronos, he leaps in. Okay, Solstice. there we go. Town goes. Doctor, it's going to be a genocide here. For Sync he Esports. Dead? What on he earth is this about? He's going to barely live as well. And the lead is just enormous out of nowhere, it feels like, for Sync yeah. Esports. This is ridiculous. Like, that was. I honestly thought, okay, Tundra goes into ulti the Riptide, and, you know, he didn't take any damage because he was magic immune, and the, I don't know, damage goes before or something. Anyways, he shouldn't. He, he should be able to, you know kill the Tundra afterwards, at least the Doctor was, but Tundra also survived with like one HP. And he has Puzzle Box 3 now. That's pretty ridiculous. Puzzle yeah. Box 3 and I'm assuming post haste into, I don't know, Soul's Bulwark and then... <laughs> Two yeah. kills! I mean, no matter what he gets from here on out, the portal key and the level 3 Puzzle Box pretty damn powerful, especially at this point in the game, so... 
He's uh, definitely excelled very well. And then again, the Kronos on top of that. Yeah, that, that was a pretty beautiful setup. Not necessarily like a huge wombo combo, but it was just kind of one after the other as it really should be for this Legion team as far as the Solstice follow-up uh, to that Kronos field. And again, the complexity just completely caught, you know, really not ready right there. So you see the Hellflower. It is being worked on by Formless to eventually be finished here. You got the Shrunken Head on Warbeast going to be coming out as well with about 500 gold saved up. Uh, definitely some pretty key items, but I, I, I'm really looking back at this Riptide here. It's just his impact has basically been nothing, which especially yeah. for Fuzzy Sloth is is weird to say. He, he this is We see teams even ban this hero against him lately uh, because he is known for being so good on it. But they really, the Tundra matchup, the early ganks from Solstice coming out, and he just has not been able to make anything work here on this hero. Mm -hmm. It's essentially kind of a useless hero at this point. But... I don't know if you got the replay of the last fight as well, but uh -huh. if you rewatch it and have Kronos, if you focus on Kronos in that fight, he was just perma bashing. I did get the replay a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do see that. The illusions were even bashing the uh, Warbeast yeah. right there. Back to the live action right here. Zibe, by the way, he does get caught, so complexity. It was weird. Composure. He initiated on the Doctor and then started auto attacking him. Mm -hmm. without using his puzzle box. So it looked really weird. I don't know what his plan was. Uh, he, he, I mean, he can't solo Dr. Repulsor. That's just not going to happen. Yeah. It doesn't put too much of a dent in uh, their lead, though. Nope, not, not a huge deal, but it's something for complexity to feel at least excited oh, about, so knowing that they got something going for them now. But as I say that, Monarch gets easily picked off. And you look at Behemoth right here. He's just going to open Shockwave on Oscar. Look at that. Nearly solo kills him. Here comes Solstice. Now, he didn't actually kill him. And Magnus is going to be able to make the escape. So that was pretty huge right there. Unless Solstice chases now. Now, he's got the vision, but he's not going to go. It's just way too deep, obviously. So I think... Macero did kind of mess up though. He had the ultimate, didn't auto attack, then used his enrage, didn't auto attack, then used his stun, didn't, and the Fisher stun, and then auto attack. So he missed out on two potential auto attacks. Mm -hmm. That could have been the, I mean, that's the difference between a kill or not, right? Yeah. He maxed heavyweight already, so Magna should have been dead. Yeah. Not for sure he was, but nope. Made the escape. A little bit of credit for Oscar too, but yeah, perhaps. Not playing it 100% efficiently for Sync Esports, so missing on a kill opportunity, but maybe the least of their concerns because uh, there's not a whole lot to be concerned about in the end, actually. Is they're doing Congor now, about a 14,000 gold lead, nearly 11,000 experience lead here. They are not going to commit to it necessarily just yet. You do see Complexity kind of checking it out as uh, even a ward goes down from a Monarch there, but it's going to be removed. And By Shiver. Yeah, that, I saw that too. I didn't know if I saw that correctly, but I guess a Shiver. Shiver just flies over and it counters all the wards. Huh. That's interesting. But Zibe has been doing a really good job with uh, scouting with Shiver. Mm -hmm. I think it's been the reason why they're so far ahead in this game. Yeah. No, yeah, obviously Tundra is one of those very impactful heroes to where he can definitely control a game for a team. He's... That scary, you know, kind of like a fade or an Infora, that impact of we always got to be on our toes here. We always got to be, you know, wondering, are they seeing us? Are they going? In fact, speaking of that, what you got here, middle lane, Magnus and Behemoth, or Magnus was here, but Behemoth is there as well. And they do end up finishing what you got right there. You see Oscar, he should be able to live. Maybe not, actually. Ooh, Masera trying to get He wants there. to go in and auto attack. <laughs> mm -hmm. He could have, but no, too risky. Happy with the kill on a war beast. You see complexity yeah, though. As they're good for. I mean, they where they they like to do a bit of the, you know avoid fights. Just try to recover now by farm on the carries. Yep. But look at the perma bash on Congor. It's pretty hilarious. Wow. <laughs> he really didn't even move there like the whole time. You just you need like a wing bow now on Kronos, and then he just has all his illusions will do so much. His illusions will be, like, the key. Uh, top lane, Formless, he's caught here. Magmus, or excuse me, wow, Behemoth locking him down long enough, and yes, it will be a kill. You saw Monarch over here yeah, actually Monarch use the ultimate, but it still wasn't enough. She was hiding over here. Didn't matter. 
They catch Doctor anyways, and no Kronos field even needed. And, and you see the wing buzz you just mentioned there purchased by Kronos as well and delivered. So, uh, man, I, I again, it's, it's a case of a grand finals here, this being game one of it. I, I don't think complexity should be conceding by any means, but it's got to feel pretty grim right now for them as far as I hope mean, here. I don't think they realize how far behind they are. That could be it, yeah. They don't realize that Solstice is 490 gold per minute as well. It, I, I could understand if they feel like they, yeah, they're actually doing okay here. But as we notice, as we see, it's it's definitely out of control, really, for Sync, it feels like. I mean, Dr. Repulsor, uh, the Icon and the Hellflower, it's, it's a good start. But as you pointed out, too, it's his damage right now, you know, not going maybe that Grimoire. It's not going to be as radical, and sure, I guess the Shrunken Head wouldn't be too good this game. They still have several ways to lock him down through his Shrunken Head. So yeah, that might not be worth going if he, that's what he was thinking, or if maybe people were thinking, but um, I guess he really kind of should just go a Grimoire next with that set. He's going to fight Glacius here, by the way. Ends up being a free kill there. Here comes Mario Party. <laughs> Looking. Yeah, do you think... Uh, do you think Doctor needs a Shrunken, or is that just not going to really do much for him here? I I kind of want him to get a Shrunken, but it's only because of Behemoth and Glacius. The rest, yeah. I mean, Solstice as well, but as you were saying, it's not going to do much versus the Kronos or the Tundra. <laughs> that ultimate, that ultimate is yeah, perfect. Yeah, that placement was great. And he has a double damage. Look at that. You saw the Chrysalis coming out. It just didn't matter <laughs> right there. Rewinds, that's something. That, yeah, we really haven't seen too many rewinds because he hasn't been taking a lot of damage this game, but that's just something else on top of it all that they're going to have to deal with, too. I mean, this is going to be Rax right here. They, I, they, I don't think they're stopping this. So, uh, right? That's in yeah, they can't. Yeah. Look at that. Kronos <laughs> is carrying so hard. I'm telling you, Sync, they have a couple of these niche picks that they like. Okay, that's a little troll Mr. right there. Intimidation, <laughs> <laughs> the baby. <laughs> he knew it was coming. GG, well played. And game one oh, will man. go to Sync. So, yeah, the carry Kronos. That was definitely something. But, again, before that, it really was uh, really that top fight. I remember when uh, Complexity yeah, was trying to set up a kill. Face. Yeah, <laughs> Ended up backfiring. Or, yeah, okay. No, no, no. When uh, Glacius was uh, yeah. Veldrotted, spotted the Magmus. Yeah, that yeah, was a uh, yeah. great fight. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mario Party didn't end up doing much there. No, nope. the Sync then went in and completely had total control of it, and that showed. So Sync Esports, they take game number one. Yeah, your final thoughts here. Short time. Final thoughts, uh, Zibe carry with Hexer and, and Zlapt was always there, and everything just worked out for them. The entire draft was so... It could it could have been a fiasco had they not gotten the early kills with the Solstice and Tundra, because I'm still under the impression that a Riptide is going to beat Tundra in a 1v1 situation, but they played it really well with